a mixture of 28 kilomoles of CO2 and 2 kilomoles of hydrogen and 2 kilomoles of carbon monoxide and 28 kilomoles of water vapor and 40 kilomoles of nitrogen enter a heat exchanger. Well, the heat exchanger is going to make it hot. And then also give it some time to react. An equilibrium mixture of the same components, CO2, H2, CO, H2O, and N2, exit at an elevated temperature of 1900 Kelvin and 1 atm. Determine the equilibrium composition of the exiting mixture. So we know what went into the heat exchanger and what comes out is an equilibrium mixture at a given temperature of 1900 Kelvin and pressure of 1 atm. And we're asked to calculate that composition of the equilibrium mixture. We take a look at all the players. The players are carbon dioxide, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, water, nitrogen. I count them up. There's five of them. The maximum equation we had A, B, C, D, that's four. Right? So one of these are what they call inert. It's not doing anything. It's going along for the ride. Now, if you change it to temperature, really boost up the temperature, they may say that one's now going to start participating and starting to do something by decomposing and recombining. But in this stage, the nitrogen is inert. And the other ones are the ones that are doing something. The carbon in the CO2 is disassociating and going to CO. And some of that H2, that hydrogen, is working, playing around with the H in the water, H2O. And the oxygen's in the carbon dioxide, the carbon monoxide, and the water. But nitrogen's only by itself. True? Did they say any NO? No, they didn't. If they did say NO, then we would have a much different, more challenging problem. But at this point, N2 is inert. If you came in with 40 kilomoles of N2, how many kilomoles of N2 do you think you're going to get? If you came in with 40 kilomoles and the equilibrium mixture, you have 40 kilomoles. Now, you could do 40 kilomoles per second or something, so it's more of a flow problem. But it's easier to, to get rid of the per second and just talk about it's 40 kilomoles in the equilibrium mixture of nitrogen. All right. We go back and we look for some reaction equation of this form, A, B, C, D, which describes carbon dioxide, hydrogen going with carbon monoxide and water. And do we find one? I think we do, but you have to just go looking for it. Is it this one? This is the only one that has four players in it, isn't it? This has three players, three players, three players, three players, two players, two players, two players in it, right? But this one has four players in it, and it's the one we need. It said it was 1900 to temperature. And so this number right here is log base 10 of K is equal to plus 0.619. For this reaction, CO2 plus H2 goes to CO and H2O. So the equation of interest was CO2 plus H2 dissociates or combines in an equilibrium mixture to have CO and H2O. And it's really important to get those coefficients in front of each term. And I believe every one of those were 1. And let's just check. Does the carbon balance, you know, does the oxygen, yes, hydrogen, everything's balanced. It's a good reaction equation, right? So that, there, there you go. We want to compute the equilibrium composition. This equation applies only at equilibrium. That's our chemical equilibrium equation. Um, here we put it in terms of n's. Sometimes you use this form or the y form, the, the mole fractions, because they told you the total number of moles, like 28 kilomoles of CO2, etc. Then let's just use this. So what we have is we're going to have the 10 to the power, what was the coefficient? 0.619, right? 
10 to the power 0.619, that's what K is at this temperature for that reaction, to the number of moles of C, that's going to be the number of moles of carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is in that C position, raised to the power 1, number of moles of H2O, because water vapor is in the D position, raised to the stoichiometric coefficient 1, divided by number of moles of CO2, which is in the A position, raised to 1, number of moles of H2 hydrogen, raised to the coefficient 1. We have P divided by 1 atm, divided by the total number of moles, which is the number of moles of carbon monoxide, number of moles of water, number of moles of carbon dioxide, and the number of moles of hydrogen, plus the number of moles of nitrogen. All of them make up your, your gas at equilibrium, even though the nitrogen's inert. Even though the nitrogen's inert, it still needs to be, it's in the total N. All raised to the power, we're going to have 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1. Now, this is a very special case, and how many people already realize that, that this exponent up here is 0? 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1, right? And so all of this right here is equal to unity. You know, any number raised to the power 0 is 1. True? From math. So our equation simplifies, and so it's just 10 to the plus 0.619 is equal to the number of moles of CO times the number of moles of H2O in equilibrium, number of moles of CO2 in equilibrium, number of moles of hydrogen in equilibrium. That's it. That's our equilibrium equation. I don't know four things in that equation. I don't know any of the ends. True? I need other equations. This equation is an equilibrium equation. There's other equations which are mass balance or species balance equations. So if we go and we say, can I write a carbon balance equation? What would that look like? Well, they told me I had 28 kilomoles of CO2 coming into the heat exchanger, 2 kilomoles of hydrogen going into the heat exchanger, 2 kilomoles of carbon monoxide into the heat exchanger, 28 kilomoles of H2O going into the heat exchanger, and then 40 kilomoles of N2. I didn't really sum them, but if you summed them, can you see that you get 100 kilomoles in? 28 and 2, that's 30. 28 and 2, that's 30, plus 40. So you have 100 kilomoles coming in. That's nice numbers. makes it easy to do the math. But on the carbon balance, we're going to have one for every of the 28 kilomoles of CO2. That's bringing with it one kilomole of carbon. And we're going to have one for every kilomole of CO that comes in, and there's two that come in of the CO. So in total, what comes in is uh, 28 is 30. What goes out? Well, in every CO going out, which I don't know the number of, that's an unknown, I need to calculate that, I'll have one. And for every CO2 that goes out, I'll have one. So there's an equation. It comes from a carbon balance that says 30 is equal to an equilibrium, the number of moles of CO, an equilibrium plus the number of moles of CO2. Let's do the next balance. What balance do you want to do? Oxygen? Okay, let's count them up. I had 28 kilomoles of CO2 coming in. For every CO2 coming in, that's bringing with it two O's. How many with the hydrogen? Nothing. How much with the carbon monoxide? Well, I had two kilomoles of carbon monoxide coming in, bringing with it one for every one. And do I have any oxygen with the water? Yes. So we had 28 kilomoles of the water, H2O, and for every one is one coming in. True? That's all the N. That's the oxygen balance on the N. And when you sum that up, you get 86. Okay? 
86. Now, how much going out in equilibrium? Well, we'll have two for every CO2. We'll have one for every CO, and we'll have one for every H2O. Does that equation look okay? So two, uh, uh, I can maybe rearrange it and put NCO plus two NCO2 plus NH2O. That's a little, clean it up a little bit. So now I have an equilibrium equation. I have a carbon balance equation, oxygen balance equation, three equations, but I still have four unknowns. I need one more balance equation. What is it? Hydrogen balance. So with the hydrogen balance, we see that we have two times the two kilomoles of hydrogen coming in. And we have two times the 28 kilomoles of water coming in. That sums up to 60. And going out, the hydrogens, we have um, two times number of H2 plus two times the number of H2O. Does that hydrogen balance equation look good? So now uh, I have two times the number of H2s plus two times the number of H2Os. You can either solve four equations and four unknowns where one of the equations is nonlinear, the, the equilibrium equation, or what you can do is try to eliminate variables and uh, push them into that one equation and get the one equation, one unknown, which is your nonlinear equation, which is your equilibrium. That's the preferred strategy. It's what's done in the textbook. So you just pick one. And so uh, pick to solve for NCO and then get every other thing in terms of it. So from the carbon balance equation, wherever you see a CO2, replace it by 30 minus NCO. Does that make sense? Any place I see a CO2, the number CO2, I say, replace it by 30 times NCO. So if I start reworking this equation, I'll leave NCO right there because that's the one I pick as my variable I'm going to solve for. But right below it, I'm going to have 30 minus NCO. That was the easy one. Unfortunately, it gets a little uglier because I've got to work out this NH2O and the N. H2. Let's go to the second equilibrium equation, this one. This one says, I'm going to kind of do it in multiple steps, N of H2O is going to be 86 minus N of CO minus 2 times N of CO2, right? But any place I see an N of CO2, I replace it by 30 minus N of CO. So this becomes 26 plus NCO. So the number of H2O is 26 plus NCO. So I come up here, 26 plus NCO. Now, guess what you do for this equation? Same thing. All right, I need to solve for the number of H2. Is that going to be 30 minus the number H2O? Thumbs up if you agree. So that's equal to 30 minus 26 plus NCO, true, which is 4 minus NCO. So now I have uh, reduced it to one equation. I need more room, so I'm going to have to scroll down, okay? So I scroll down, and I have this equation. 10 to the plus 0.619 is equal to what I'm looking for, NCO times 26 plus the number of carbon monoxide divided by 30 minus the number of carbon monoxide times 4 minus the number of carbon monoxide. One equation, it's nonlinear. It's still algebraic, but it's nonlinear. With one unknown, how are you going to solve it? You have to have a calculator, and you have to know how to solve for that. When I teach this class, always there's some people that are like, hey, 
before I can start to you know, encourage students to do it, they already have the solution. So when you have this equation, you have to be able to solve for and solve that n of CO is equal to 3.17. That's the answer. It has units, kilomole. And once I have that from this equation, then I can go back to each of these previous equations, calculate NCO2. That's going to be 26.83 kilomoles. The N of H2 comes in at 0.83 kilomoles. And the number of moles of H2O is 29.83. Uh, 17 kilomoles and the number of moles of N2 nitrogen going along for the ride is still 40 kilomoles. And if you wanted to, that would be acceptable, just leave it in the total amounts. But if you wanted to calculate the mole fraction of CO, you just sum up all of these, you find out that the sum is 100 kilomoles. Again, good to four digits. And so then this just becomes 3.17%. Uh, this becomes 26.83%, etc. cetera, because it, it's all one kilomole, 100 kilomoles total number gas. Okay, so the mole fractions um, for this problem, because I started with a, a nice number N coming in, is equivalent. So y of H2 is 0.83%, uh, et cetera. 29.17%, and y of N2, 40%. That's the answer. You can box it this way, or you can box it the other way. Questions? You did it, did it, did it? Good.